In the Tournament of Power Arts, we have been introduced to new characters from other universes. Most of them have been forgettable, while others have left a heavy impact on the series itself. I want to talk about two specific characters that are controversial throughout the Dragon Ball fandom. These characters blew up when they were introduced in this arc. They have both received both positive and negative backlash. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. Kel and Kalifla. These two are the first female Saiyans to go Super Saiyan. Not only that, but in a short time span, they were able to go even further beyond that. A lot of people are confused as to why Kel and Kalifla are so strong. Well, I just might have the answer. So what is up guys, this is Moon Killer here and I want to talk to you guys about why I think Kalifla and Kel are so fucking OP. So how do I start this, let's see, um... In chapter 317 of the original Dragon Ball manga, we see Goku and his friends celebrating the supposed de demise of Frieza, only to come to the horrible realization that Frieza had survived Goku's spirit bomb. Goku then Frieza then proceeds to kill Goku's best friend since hot childhood, Krillin, thus triggering the transformation of Super Saiyan. Throughout the series, other Saiyans obtained this form through different circumstances, but all the situation had intense anger involved. Later in chapter 408 of the manga, Gohan is in his Super Saiyan form, helplessly watching as the Cell Juniors deployed by Cell toy with his allies during the Cell games. Android 16 speaks to Gohan, encouraging him to let his anger out and fight back in order to save the planet he loves, Earth. Cell doesn't want to hear this shit, so he stomps Android 16's head, destroying him. This causes Gohan to finally let his anger out, which triggers him to transform into a Super Saiyan 2. The events that triggered these Super Saiyan transformations took place in Universe 7. There are also Saiyans in Universe 6 that are also capable of using these transformations. In Dragon Ball Super Episode 37, Vegeta is going up against a Universe 6 Saiyan known as Kaba. Vegeta tells Kaba to go Super Saiyan, but he can't, and he asks Vegeta to help him. Disgusted at Kaba's weakness, Vegeta transforms into a Super Saiyan and proceeds to beat Kaba's ass. He threatens to kill everyone Kaba loves and destroys his planet. Angered and desperate, Kaba transforms into a Super Saiyan for the first time. His trigger was the same as the Saiyans from Universe 7. Anger. But then we have Kalifla. In Dragon Ball Super Episode 92, Kaba demonstrates his Super Saiyan form to Kalifla. He attempts to piss her off by calling her names hoping to get a transformation out of her, but it doesn't work. Kalifla asks Kaba if he's always angry when he transforms. He replies by telling her he isn't. He transforms by focusing his key to the center of his back. I know this sounds like bullshit, but stay with me, okay? So, he basically emulates the movement of Ki when he was angry in order to transform. So Kalifla tries this and very shortly ends up transforming into a Super Saiyan. Now in the next episode, Kel gets jealous of Kaba, thinking that he and Kalifla would end up together and then ends up transforming into a Super Saiyan Berserker. When Kel was about to kill Kaba, Kalifla transformed into a Super Saiyan 2 to stop the blast. Kalifla shot out two forms that Goku and Gohan unlocked under extreme circumstances. Now, there's one argument that I've heard around the Dragon Ball fandom, which has to do with the Universe 6 Saiyans evolving differently from the Universe 7 Saiyans. Now, yes, it is true. The Universe 6 Saiyans have evolved differently from the Universe 7 Saiyans. Most notably, they are born without tails. The Saiyans are also able to obtain the Super Saiyan forms way more easier than Universe 7 Saiyans. In that regard, Universe 6 Saiyans are more similar to Saiyan-human hybrids than they are full-blooded Saiyans of Universe 7. According to Dragon Ball Chosen Chu 4, Saiyan genes have an extraordinarily good capability with Earthling blood. Because of this, when the two races are mixed together, children with formidable power are born. Particularly, those halflings born with tails had an exceptional power, battle power. There are many things that they naturally master from a young age, such as the ordinarily Ardo Ardaus transformation into a Super Saiyan. In spite of having such an outstanding battle sense, they do not have a fondness for battle like a pure Saiyan. Instead, it seems that the violent temperament of the Saiyan has been relaxed through their earthling blood. 
This explains why Goten and Trunks were able to transform into Super Saiyans at such a young age. Since Universe 6 Saiyans are born without tails, it is possible that their biology is somewhat similar to Saiyan human hybrids. Now, the next argument is one that I came up with myself, which I believe is canon and is true. It is possible for a Saiyan to become a Super Saiyan without becoming angry. So Cauliflower was able to not only obtain Super Saiyan, but was also able to obtain Super Saiyan 2 moments later without getting angry. When both of these forms made their debut, both users were extremely angry. So why not Cauliflower? It is possible to reach Super Saiyan by just training. Although Gohan achieved Super Saiyan 2 through intent, intense rage, Goku and Vegeta were able to obtain it just by training. Goku was also able to reach Super Saiyan 3 by training as well. So it is safe to assume that if you're strong enough and you know how it feels to become a Super Saiyan, you could transform by emulating that feeling without being angry. And my next argument is extremely high power levels. So in order for Saiyans to go Super Saiyan, they need to have an extremely high power level. If Frieza killed Krillin in front of Saiyan Saga Goku, nothing would happen. On the battle on planet Namek, Goku had a high enough power level to have access to this transformation. It is possible that the Saiyans of Universe 6 were already extremely powerful, but they just didn't know what a Super Saiyan was. Unlike the Universe 7 Saiyans, the Universe 6 Saiyans never had their planet destroyed by someone like Frieza. That means that they could train with other Saiyans and together grow even stronger. Not only that, Universe 6 are heroes in their universe. They fight against evildoers in order to, to protect their universe. You can also use the previous argument to say that they were naturally powerful. Add both arguments together, you'll have a race of abnormally strong Saiyans. While Kaba fought against Vegeta in the Universe 6 and 7 tournament, he was able to swap hands with base form Vegeta. Vegeta even said that Kaba was equal to him in his base form. Not only does Vegeta have a god enhanced base form, but he trained in the room of spirit and time for 3 years before the tournament. So I'd say that speaks for itself. Is maybe I guess Kaba is as strong as a Saiyan beyond God. But I'm sure you guys get my point. So these are the reasons why I think the Universe 6 Saiyans are more powerful than the Saiyans of Universe 7. Kaba was easily able to fight a god enhanced base Vegeta, which is extremely powerful. So yeah, that speaks for itself. So if you guys have if you guys disagree with anything I say, please feel free to comment below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next Dragon Ball video.